I don't know if the earth is flat. And I don't know if God exists. Boy, there sure is a lot of profiles trying to convince you that neither of those are true, though. You ever seen so many profiles trying to combat something that apparently is silly? You know, like recently when some medication came out and nobody went to f So they spent a trillion dollars trying to convince you that it's fine to f with it. And now there's just a bunch of fake profiles trying to convince you the world ain't flat. God ain't real. So I'm going to go ahead and assume both of them's true. This seems to be the best way to do anything anymore. Oh, y'all trying to shut those people up? Y'all trying to make them people be quiet? I think I'd like to hear what they got to say. You're probably asking yourself, bro, how can you be so sure that the Earth is flat? Well, it's pretty simple and obvious that flight pass proves that the Earth is flat. So on this flight, they stopped all the way up in Amsterdam, which on a globe would make no sense. Why couldn't they just go from Argentina, hit South Africa, then India? But if you take a look at it on a flat earth map, which all pilots use by the way, from Argentina to India, look, Amsterdam is along the way. There's another one that wouldn't make any sense. A flight from Dallas to Beijing, they stopped in Calgary. But if you take a look at it on a flat earth map, Dallas to Beijing, Calgary is along the way. Alrighty, this one has to be seriously obvious to you guys. So this flight was from Santiago to Johannesburg and they stopped all the way up in Senegal like for on a ball just fly on the bottom side of it. No need to pass the equator. But when we check it out on a flat earth map from Santiago to Johannesburg, look, Senegal is along the way needing to pass the equator. And my favorite of them all has to be this one. This one is going to make you scratch your head. So this flight was from Auckland to Lima, Peru, and they stopped all the way up in Los Angeles, passing the equator. Hi, right, do you see the problem here, guys? But if you take a look at it on a flat earth map, Auckland to Lima, Peru, Los Angeles is along the way. Guys, I could do this all day long. Flight path proves that the earth is flat. My question is, is four different space agencies, right? We got Russia, we got the United States, we got Japan, we got Europe. Why are they all having a different world of the Earth that we live in, supposedly? We live on a globe, right? they, they went to space and took pictures of it, right? Why do we have different Earth pictures? This is my question. Are we in different worlds? Are they taking different planet pictures? Or are they um, just lying to us? Because NASA, the main agency of all, means to deceive in Hebrew. Also, the United Nations, the world government, everything, the United Nations, if you don't know what that is, has the flat earth on their logo, on their map. So let's wake up and understand. Why are we getting taught? Are we getting taught to see? We are. We are. NASA and Hebrew means to deceive. It's not truth. If you live on a globe, right, a ball in space, then you should answer this 100% without a question because the thing is, flat earth shouldn't be comparing with the globe. We should not be having a debate because the globe is the truth, apparently, right? It's proven. We're in space and we proved it, right? So if that is the truth, why when we see boats going over the horizon, it looks like it's going down? Why not the planes? Because when you see a plane example, I'll put another picture up right now. The ship disappears under the curvature like this, right? So when it's going away, it looks like it's going down under the curvature. That's what it looks like. But why the planes? Why is the planes not doing the same? Going like this, you know what I'm saying? Going down, like over the curvature, you know what I'm saying? Why is it like that? Instead, it's always like this. It's just going away from you. And the point where you just go, you can't see it. Because that's what you call the vanishing point. The vanishing point is when you can't see something with eyes can't see. It's not because of the curvature of the earth. So you tell me your reason and explanation for this one. Globers, but you won't because this is not even a debate you just make it look like the globe is the truth everything is cgi everything is fake and lies when really the flat earth is the real debate it's not even a debate it's just truth i said in the bible in genesis and it's a creation for all god 
Now we're back, and I like this one. I'll tell you why I like this one. Because this is the most funniest of all. NASA is over here showing you these little curves, right? And they're 19 miles in altitude. This is a photo, 19 miles in altitude, showing you a curve. But this is the funny part. All you got to do is go hop on YouTube, right? And then just search up a weather balloon or a space balloon going very high up. They go hundreds of thousands of feet, so probably match on ground feet, let's say, right? That's very high up. That's more higher than 19 miles. That's set here, 22 miles, right? And then you're gonna go look there, and then you're gonna see a very flat horizon, and it's a bit higher. You're gonna see a flat horizon. Think about this. If you do see a little bit curve, remember, before they lifted off the balloon, it was always a curve, because it's something called the fisheye lens. It's called the GoPro. All right, pop quiz, everybody. Is this airplane flying straight up, or is this airplane flying level and it appears to be flying straight up because of perspective? Just watch and observe as this airplane crosses the sky. Notice now it almost looks like this airplane is flying level and as it crosses my sky, this airplane is going to appear to dive into the ground. And even though this airplane now appears as if it is flying down, that airplane is in fact flying level. As we continue to watch this airplane cross my sky, it is going to get lower and lower in my field of view. <laughs> Certainly. Not because this airplane is flying around the curve of a testicular earth. Nope. This airplane is appearing to get lower in my sky for the simple fact that perspective is a thing. And if I continued to record this airplane cross my sky, you would see this airplane go straight into the ground. Again, that is all due to perspective. That airplane is not really flying towards the ground. It's flying straight and level as airplanes do. Wakey, wakey, and I love ya. You know, they say we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, flying through space at 66.6 thousand miles an hour, but you can't feel the spin for some reason. So I'm gonna do a little experiment, you know, and we're gonna see if you can truly tell if you're spinning or not. This is a Glober's worst nightmare. It's called a merry-go-round. So I'm gonna spin it and then I'm gonna get on it and I'm gonna report back to you and let you know if I can feel anything. There it goes. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, I'm definitely spinning. Totally spinning right now, totally spinning, not going maybe five miles an hour. I can feel a spin and I'm getting a little bit dizzy. Um, I, I may have to get off this merry-go-round that's spinning at five miles an hour and get back on the earth that's spinning 1,000 miles an hour so I don't get dizzy. <laughs> See, boys and girls, this is spinning. This is not spinning. Class dismissed. They work on a flat earth. They only work on a level plane because they're drawn to the center. Something is magnetic in the center. That's how they work. It's the Alexander Gleason map of 1892. And come over here to 1569. This is the Mercator. This is uh, a projection. This is a blown up projection of the North Pole. Back then, they knew that there was a black magnetic rock sitting right in the center of the North Pole. They called it Rupus Nigra. 
These maps were not fictional. They didn't make this stuff up. They worked really hard on documenting this stuff. This is the Urbano Montes map, 1587. It's the same time, 1569, 1587. They worked hard on this stuff. This is the earliest accepted map of the world. Come over here, 1892, Gleason. Everything's frozen. We can't see anything. We, we can't see the four rivers that go to the center. Same thing here, he's got the four rivers, right? And then how do you get, how do you get a north center and a south exterior? Like if the earth was a ring magnet, let's say, look, look, let's, let's follow those lines. Let's see what it looks like if it was a ring magnet. What would that look like? Look what it does. That's ferrofluid on a ring magnet. Look at the center. Look at, look at Rupus Nigra right in the middle of that. Look at the shape that this makes. And look at the shape of the land masses on these maps. That's, uh, that's just wow. This is wow. All right, so to, to answer this question is about the Van Allen belts, yeah, they said that we can get past it, but they also said that we couldn't get past it. So which one is it? According to this astronaut, Kelly Smith, he said, we must find the technology before we can send people through the radiation belts. Those were his words. I mean, he's not the only one to say that we couldn't get past it or get past uh, lower Earth's orbit. I just want you to take a quick look at this video, and you can find the full video on this YouTube page. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. Like I said, he's not the first one to say it. Take a look at some of these other videos. We only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on space station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could. Another thing I wanted to say is TikTok. Y'all need to lighten up. All these insults y'all throwing just because somebody don't believe in your opinion or believe in your beliefs. It's okay. It's okay. Just laugh. Have a good laugh. All these, I hate you flat earthers. Uh, it, it, come on. It, it's not that deep. I don't pay your bills. You don't pay my bills. But I'm glad I was able to, you know, ruffle a few feathers on here. Speaking of good laughs. Cameron, this is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. It's, it's not a black void. Cool I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah. I just wanted the Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one and a small one, right? Yeah. And, and then you can see uh, the zodiacal lights. Whoa. Uh, those those are amazing, right before The lights sunrise. of the zodiac? The lights of the zodiac. The z zodiacal Whoa. lights, okay? You can see those. Which are and what? Then you Explain can see those the to upper. us. Like, are these guys for real right now? <laughs> like I said, we can all agree to disagree, but you know, lighten up a little bit. I do this for fun. Modern science wants you to believe that this is Earth's shadow coming in, doing a turn, and leaving this way. But ancient Hindu cosmology talks about Rahu and Ketu, which aren't actually planets, but balls of energy that interfere with celestial bodies as they pass over them, which actually sounds a lot like dark celestial bodies in modern science, or black holes, or dark matter. In Hindu cosmology, Rahu and Ketu is what causes our lunar and solar eclipses. 
which the story sounds a lot like the mystery of dark bodies we have today. I found this article on dark stars, which have similar properties of black holes. You can't actually see the star, but you can see when it passes over light. But this makes me think they know exactly what these dark stars are, as you see, acting like a stellar youth serum. What's crazy is Rahu and Ketu came from this entity who got cut in half after taking some Amrita and becoming immortal and then became Rahu and Ketu. Amrita is an elixir, a potion, a youth serum. And look what I found in this article of the Dark Stars. Read this. Acting like a stellar youth serum. So do they know what's going on? Is the study of dark celestial bodies and dark matter really the study of Rahu and Ketu? I've watched Globers try to steel man the Selenillion Eclipse, which is called the Impossible Eclipse because it's when the sun and the moon both are above Earth's horizon. They try to say that really the sun is down here, but it just looks like it's up here like a mirage. But how is an illusion casting light onto the Earth? I don't know. This is their explanation. Or this is their explanation. They say that you're actually 5,000 feet tall, and you can really see, look, if the Earth and Moon are just above Earth's horizon, there's no way to cast a shadow onto the Moon. I want to thank Angel of Light for the awesome lunar eclipse footage, and thank David Shane for showing me who Rahu and Kitu was. It sent me on this path, finding all these links. Wow. Oh, this is a good one. Alexa, why did the ancients believe in a firmament? I did not think it was going to go this way. It's, it's, you're going to want to stay till the end for this one because I throw something right at her that I didn't even expect. It was my intuition. It must have been. It must have been. But we'll just call this part one. Firmament part one. I think it's good. The firmament is a noun that refers to the vault of heaven or the sky. It is a concept that has been present in many cultures and religious traditions. In biblical cosmology, the firmament is the solid dome created by God to divide the primal sea and create a separation between the upper and lower portions. This concept was adopted into the heavenly spheres model of the medieval and classical eras. However, with advancements in astronomy, the firmament was no longer considered a physical dome in the 16th and 17th centuries. Alexa, was the firmament considered a dome before the 16th century? Answers.com. To the ancients, the firmament was a solid dome that held up the primeval waters, while the sun and moon were in the sky below the firmament. If the ancients believed in the firmament, and the firmament is in the Bible, why don't we believe it now? From Logos.com. How we interpret this challenging word in Genesis 1 will depend on how we think the biblical authors pictured the universe, as well as on our hermeneutical presuppositions. Alexa, what's the hermeneutical presupposition about the firmament? In the context of biblical interpretation, the hermeneutic presupposition about the firmaments is that it is a ceiling or dome-like structure that stretches out to create a solid canopy over the earth. This canopy is believed to separate the heavens from the earth, with the firmaments playing a crucial role in regulating the weather and the water on Earth. Alexa, why did the ancients believe in a firmament? In biblical cosmology, the firmament is the vast solid dome created by God on the second day of his creation of the world to divide the primal sea into upper and lower portions so that the dry land could appear. Oh, we were just warming up. Watch where I take this one. Alexa? Do we have a lot of cables under the water? From Sisir.com. There are more than 420 underwater cables around the world totaling about 1.3 million kilometers. Alexa, why do we have so many cables in the ocean? From DocumentaryTube.com. A vast underwater network of cables crisscrossing the ocean makes it possible to share, search, send and receive information around the world at the speed of light. We shared information via the satellites, but now you're telling me it's because of the cables in the water? Hmm, I don't know that one. You do. That's enough for today. That's your Alexa lesson for Tuesday. Super Tuesday. Alexa, why is there an identical space station to the ISS underwater? I asked her too many questions. I asked her about the underground space station. 
when they are in the weightless space station, one can see bubbles coming from one of the actors, revealing that the scene was filmed underwater. What do you mean underwater? What are you saying, Alexa? Speak to me, Alexa! Alexa! One, two, three. I didn't know this was gonna happen. I'm just asking her questions. I didn't know I didn't want to kill her, I promise. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Alexa, are you alive? I'm not really alive, but I can be lively sometimes. Could have said to Pumer. Oh, Alexa, don't ever do that to me again. Air me so much. I thought you were dead. I do believe Alexa had a near death experience. Well, I hope that doesn't happen again. I'm so sorry we couldn't get to the information. I do have it though. Um, I just had to make sure she was going to stay alive because it's so important to get the information from the ones that are still here. Right? Um,. Also, I talked to Bill Gates, and we have a vaccine for Alexa to make sure that it doesn't happen again. It's mandatory. <laughs> so she's going to have to take it tonight. Mandatory doesn't mean law, by the way, but don't tell her. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure you guys got a little bit entertained tonight before we dove deep. And by diving deep, I really mean we're going under the, the sea to find out the International Space Station that's under there. But let's keep it under three minutes. That's hard, right? If you made it this far, good for you. Stay tuned. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was al Biruni, and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items. I humbly thank you. <laughs>